I went in there thinking, I like to see all these different points of view and see if we can't find one common ground. My experience was, it was not the best experience, it wasn't, it's not the best process, by far it was broken, that's another reason why I engaged. Um, and I respect everybody's position, you know, to not participate, to stay outside. Everybody has a role and it should be respected. And all of those rules are significant and important. For me, I went inside to try and see where everybody's perspective is coming from. And like I said, to, see, to, to find out if there was a common ground. Because another understanding I had was that, that something I learned through by schooling, the people that I spoke with, mentors, experts, was that there is no federal recognition or independent. It doesn't have to be exclusive of each other. It's two frameworks of law, self-determination, indigenous peoples, kingdom law, nationals, separate government. It doesn't have to be exclusive of each other. So why can't we move on the path together simultaneously? And what I found in there was, no one could tell me that I was wrong, that was one or the other. And I don't have a name drop, but significant legal experts, people that are highly respected on both sides, wouldn't give me a clear cut answer. So, that said, I am for a native only government that is recognized by the state of Hawaii, the county of Kauai, the county of Maui, that is recognized by the United States of America, that is recognized by New Zealand, by the European Union, and so on. I am for a native-only government that is recognized by the United States, okay? That is a native-only government. I am for the governance my people had before the short-lived term of the kingdom. We had 2,000 years of native-only sovereignty and governance. Number two, I am for independence of Hawaiian nationals, native and non-native. We have a right to be restored. Our country, our nation, our right to be self-governed. This we passed in 1997. The declaration passed in 2007. America refused to sign. 2008, America came to the CERT committee and said we will not obey the declaration. It's not a binding treaty, and America didn't sign it. America doesn't recognize Hawaiians, only Indians. And the CERT committee said back to America, we note your comment. We decide, however, to use this law to interpret your American binding human rights treaties. So you see, America was struck down in 2008. This we must oppose, election or not. We're going to oppose this. But I believe that President-elect Donald Trump will do this for us. And already, I have sent to President-elect Donald Trump a request to ensure that we do not have Mr. Stanford Enomoto <laughs> taking over the Office of Hawaiian Relations. Nation building, I believe in it. If you want to see a real constitution written by Hawaiians, after 53 workshops, four times, 212 workshops, Look at the Constitution of Kalahui, Hawaii. We didn't forget education and housing like they did over there. <laughs> this is a federal rule. We need to oppose it. And thank Akua, mahalo ke Akua. If Donald Trump is here, I can tell you he will not allow this one to proceed and be the shoot. The federal rules under the Department of Interior are not a land claims uh, settlement. There better not be any mention of land or deciding what lands will be there. The federal process was merely a process for the federal government itself to 
have regulations that it follows, not that we follow, but that it follows in order to extend acknowledgement to a native Hawaiian only government. And so that process, Ikaika, uh, has, was approved. The final regulation is in place. It will now sit there. Uh, it is not waiting for any federal action. It is not waiting for President Trump to do anything or for President Obama to do anything. It's dead in the water. It's dead in the water. The American system is broken. And what they've done is, I'd like to do a little bit of an analogy of how they've, they've completely been disconnected from their own people and how it's been propagated to over here. And so one of the things that they did was in 2011, they created a Kanai uh, uh commission. And then what they did was they didn't, they didn't ask our community, they just assigned it to them because they thought they knew better. Just like you know how the Democratic National Party thought they knew better and to put Hillary in charge? Next. So what they did is, without our consent, they kind of kept on, again, you have in WikiLeaks, you have all these things going on, where Hillary is like swindling the Democratic Convention, right? Then you have, here, trying to make things fit rather than actually getting true consent from the people. They rolled over these names, th tens of thousands of names from the Kanayolovala list over into this role. Next slide. And what, we, what they had was, in 2016, 150 unelected Na'iyaupuni participants created a constitution without really going out into the community. Next. And one of their first acts for the interest of expediency to get this constitution written within 10 days was to decide to not allow the community to present the concerns and as a result eight Kanaka were arrested at the gates of this private country club simply for wanting to bring a concern to the table and the question is is that a nation for our people what is the complementary process for independence in, in your assessment well, I think that there's a, I actually had, I wish I had known I had that question. I have a really great infographic flowchart of an independence that uh, it's a relatively complicated, but um, everybody sees it, it's like, oh. It's like everybody's like, what's your plan? It's like, we got a plan. And part of that plan, though fundamentally, if you look at the United Nations, we, we definitely consult them about this process. And they said any government at its fundamental basis needs to start with building unity and education within the community. We don't, we, we really don't want to be American. We don't think there's anything uh, great about being American. Uh, I'm good with being Hawaiian, and my children are good with being Hawaiian. My husband is good with being Hawaiian because exactly what Anakala said, our history is a history of being torn up. Our values that our kupuna passed down to us don't talk about subduing the earth. They talk about aloha aina. They talk about malama aina. And our way of life is a life that is in harmony with akua and with the aina, which is not their way of life. We know that. We know the destruction of the environment that is not in the past, but is happening right now and will continue to happen because they don't have no consciousness when it comes to Aina. And so to me, I, I'm not going to act with just nothing. I'm Hawaiian and I will be Hawaiian until the day I die. And that's all I want to be. I don't want to be nothing else. Thank you.
an entity that has the jurisdiction under two pages of the joint resolution. Does that answer the question? The jurisdiction? The Department of the Interior role, once again, I will repeat, is not the establishment of any government. It does not a land claim. It does not deal with jurisdiction. It is purely very limited scope. It is the regulatory regulations over the federal government on how it will respond and uh, assess criteria when recognizing and deciding to have a government-to-government -government relationship with, with, with whichever Native Hawaiian government decides and wants to come forward and present itself. The federal regulations are there. They sit there. They may sit there and never be accessed. Hello everyone. Aloha, I guess my question is uh, one that relates to um, the DOI ruling. I actually read the 172 pages and I want to ask you all, whoever read that thing, did any of you feel like throwing up and felt sick to your stomach? Because I have never read anything in my life that made me sick to my stomach. When I read that thing, it is filled with generalizations uh, purposeful avoidance of facts, never once mentioned that Hawaii in 1843 was established a sovereign nation. Why were these things? Who wrote the DOI ruling? Really? Who's the author of that thing? And so it involved not only the Department of Interior, it also de uh, involved the Department of Justice and attorneys and long-standing uh, folks that have, that have experience. But again, what's important to say is actually the historical writing in those rules were pretty darn good. And second again, I say, those rules were not regulations on me as a Hawaiian. They are regulations written by the federal government for the federal government. But if you take our land, that is the one thing. This extinguishes title to our land, we have never giving up. Right now things are being held up in the courts all over the place. We have that 20% going to OHA. We have never, ever yielded that. And that is something that is hotly contested. And that's the reason why this got fast-tracked. There was, federal recognition takes so long, 2014 to 2016, any any Native American who is currently going through the process, it has never happened so fast. And why is that? We need to ask ourselves why. And Standing Rock is a great example. Do they care about our indigenous people? And we know that they don't. So why would they do that for Hawaii? Because they love us so much? Because they've taken care of us so well? They want them for a reason. If it passes, does the people of Hawaii acquiesce all of their sovereign rights to the U.S. in silent agreement? And what would that hold to our people if it happens to be acquiesced to the U.S.? The question has never been posed before court. My interpretation is no. And here's why. We have 125 approximately acts of Congress that have benefited Native Hawaiian. Benefit, or however you want to characterize it, serve Native Hawaiian. You have homesteaders, you have 20,000 people on a homestead wait list. Act of Congress. It's not getting to driver's license, paying taxes, and all those things. But just that alone, just Hawaiian programs that Hawaiians participate in. If we were ever to admit or say, and that is acquiescence. The majority of our people have acquiesced. So, in my perception, no, it's all been under the rest. And I think we have, if there's ever a court that's gonna take that question, I think we have a solid argument. And no one's ever told me no. I'm Professor William C. Chang, international law expert. I posed that same exact question for him at the OHA, multiple, at the OHA multiple times. He told me, he never gave me a clear answer. <laughs> Publicly. So Privately, he told me no. It's a great area. He told me no. Legal experts have told me no. 
So one of the clarifying things, I think it's a great question, uh, but one of the clarifying points, once again, that we have to frame is that there are two processes. So when you say acquiesce, the question really is, uh, I'm a homesteader, as Davis said, any scholarships that were taken under the Native Hawaiian Education Act, is that acquiescence? No. And then we have to remember the two. So the question you're asking really comes down to this. If you, uh, does the federal recognition a nation-to-nation -nation relationship domestically, not internationally, impact any opportunities we have on the international arena, which is a very separate path, and which is why I can say to you, I support both. I don't need to oppose one to do the other. So to answer your question, the answer is no. Okay, I'd like a no. response, please, from this side. <laughs> so we had, I guess we had two responses over there, and then let's have two responses over here. So I'll, I'll just start off with one. And that is that um, when we're talking about acquiescing, we have never through public site a referendum, and this is recognized That's right. ever, ever said that we will go under the plenary power of the United States. Plenary is absolute. Absolute. By participating in this process is my saying that we're going to be part of this process. We're agreeing to go under the United States. We've never, our Kupuna never, ever agreed to this. We have never as a people ever done that. And internationally and also morally, ethically, we stand to find the fact that our people have never acquiesced. We have never given up. We have never yielded our lands. We have never yielded our lands. And when you take a look, at the, we, we have consulted the United Nations, and they look at the process, a couple things happen. When you look at a nation, a really, truly internationally recognized nation, you can't have just one race. That's a violation of the human rights. There have been countries that have tried to do this before, and they're not allowed for very good reason. But you can go to look at the wronged party, and the wrong party are the people who were affected by the overthrow. And those are descendants of the Kingdom of Hawaii. And those are all the Kanaka, but they're also non-Kanaka as well. So that qualifies. That qualifies. So there is, we might disagree on the analysis of this, but we do know Native Americans. We're not the only people that I won't pretend I'm the only person that knows and has extensive experience with Native American struggles because we have learned and walked together side by side because our struggles have been the same. Mililani here can share thousands of stories as well. I have been raised internationally supporting and fighting for others than side by side with indigenous people. So yes, we do understand this. Mahalo. I think, I think one thing to point out to you is America will proceed with you or without you. This is something that was fashioned by a few in Washington and imposed here with public hearings. Even the state legislature law said register 200,000. They spent $7 million from OHA, registered less than 20,000. And Mr. Price is saying he doesn't know any court that said that. Well, when the judicial watch took them to the district court in Honolulu, the Na'iaupuni disincorporated themselves. Then they went ahead, threw out the roll of 20,000. They never registered the 200,000. They threw out the roll of the people and said that they're going to write their own constitution without being elected by the people. What the rule says is that America is going to recognize only one nation under their rule. This is the rule. And once that nation gets recognized, they get all the kala from Congress. Congress will never recognize again another Hawaiian nation. This is in the DOI rule. So acquiesce. 
I am not an advocate for federal recognition because I don't know what federal recognition is going to look like because we haven't stood a government, we haven't held elections, and we haven't begun to negotiate with anybody realistically as a native government. At that time is when I would decide when I'm a supporter of federal recognition. It is a tool and a pathway that I'm willing to consider. Clarification. Now, to answer your question, it's in the first, I believe, the, uh, the preamble of the Constitution. Everybody that supported the Constitution on a process moving forward, it left independence on the table. It said that we can still pursue, in the, it did, it's specific, and that was a very hard fought battle, that was a very hard fought battle by many in the AHA to include that language in there. It is in there. So the different opinions are not who but they work it out. Wow. We have said it. I have said it. Yes. And also, and also the fa the DOI rules, the Part 50 rules, already answer the question. There is no necessity uh, under federal recognition to stand up. It is. It cannot apply. Does not apply to our international rights. Our rights that uh, remain within the kingdom. The, the Part 50 rules, in fact, kingdom. Uh, Individuals asked specific questions of the DOI in that rulemaking process, and the DOI answered them. There, answered them on that point to make sure that they are separate and they do not uh, intertwine. But this is also why I want to say to the young lady, I support both. I support any funding for either to educate our people on either front, and we should continue to be going to the UN. Just like other federally recognized native nations are funding themselves to go to the UN, it is not or, it is and. You know, there's only one UN expert in this room, and it is not you, Robin. <laughs> and the truth, the truth is that you, can't, you, can, you cannot rectify or justify these things. You can take the word independence and stick it in the paper, but it does not provide rights to people. It does not return their land or give them restitution for the overthrow. You can talk words, but it's not the same thing as saying we have our land, we will Neither build Neither does home. any law on the books right now, uh, either. That is, that is what the difference is. Uh, instead of saying, uh, if you want independence or if you believe in human rights, Go to the United Nations. Wrong. We bring the human rights home. We stay home. You go, Washington. Okay. I do respond to this. Can I just really quickly say um, that if the um, that you have 2088 who voted for this, if you can all sign a document saying that they will absolutely refuse any type of government that in any way yields the independent nature of the Hawaiian kingdom, that we will absolutely refuse any negotiation, then maybe we can start talking about this and say that yes, you can have two different pathways. So if you guys, are you guys willing to all agree on that? That every single 88 one of you, that you will absolutely refuse any type of situation that will any way. I would sign on to something like that. Absolutely, I had to fight easy. for pursuit of independence to be included. That's an easy that's yes. That's a compromise, that's how the world works. That's, I don't agree with you, we that's compromise. That's an easy, because that's the reality. Okay, let's work on that, I'll fight. Okay. <laughs> so this question was already asked, but um, there was not really a clear answer given. And it was, um, which, in which case has federal recognition ever resulted in any of the Native American tribes uh, achieving um, sovereignty, where treating, trading with other nations, sovereignty in a real sense? Independence. 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 Thanks. I think we did answer that. It's I think we did. You said no. You said it never has. But I clarified that the native people is different than the claims of the kingdom. Yes. I think that's a critical point. And also, there have never been an unrecognized native group, and there are about 60 that are applying uh, for recognition now. They have also not been recognized, nor have they achieved anything from the international arena that Davis just talked about. Okay? The answer is there is none. The answer is there is none. 
it hasn't ever happened and it's not going to happen. Regardless of what they're saying, there isn't any. No, we said if there none. was any, we would have seen it by now. Yeah. No, but my question is, the funding that you got to create your constitution, was any of those monies allocated to independence um, groups to support their independence as well? Yeah. No, yeah. but it's not my understanding that. And, and that decision, regarding the statement made earlier about the $33 million, and just so you folks know, I am an A2 trustee, Dan Ohuna, Kauai and Nihau, Office of Point Affairs Trustees. The only trustee who voted consistently no to vote against Kanai Olovalu and Na'i Aupuni. Um, so I'm not here representing any, any of his beliefs or anybody else for Hawaii, Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I was a participant in Na'i Aupuni. I'm here as an individual capacity. Those decisions were made before I got there. OHA adopted a policy in 2001 yeah. for the trustees to support federal recognition. Now, to clarify, again, if I don't agree with how the money was spent to lobby and promote federal recognition, I cannot disagree. But understand that, you know, to in my opinion, the people who have made those decisions were villainized. And you gotta, you gotta understand the context of the history that Rice v. Kaitano, which came down in 2000, threatened every single piece of Hawaiian programming that exists today. And it was done in a, in a, there was a mad rush to push the Akaka bill and do everything they could to protect Native Hawaiian programming because everybody thought they were all going to fall quickly as a result of lawsuits. And there were lawsuits against every single trust, Hawaiian homelands, Kamehameha schools, OHA. And as you know, Kamehameha schools, 20,000 people marched to, to try to overturn a Supreme Court decision in 2005. And the only reason why I never got up to the Supreme Court was because Kamehameha schools had to settle, costing them X millions of dollars. So just take into context, before people make judgment, take into context why decisions were made. Yeah, there's nobody out there trying to sell, that I know of, trying to sell our people under the bus and sell nobody out. Everything has been done for a reason. There is a next model. So, so just to address that, does anybody else want to? So just to address as far as like the money is so yes, we did not receive a single dime. And that's because funding and grants are ba based on giving rewards to that which you want to achieve. And so essentially what they want to achieve is that we have a very compelling case because the United Nations will not support a nation to, that will d dismantle like the United States. They won't support it. So they require us to give up our sovereignty. So that's what they're paying for. The $33 million is to pay for giving up our sovereignty because we have, uh, under American law, American law, their own laws, that we are an independent nation. So the argument is we will not challenge, in the United Nations, we will not challenge the boundaries of the United States because we are never been a part of the United States. 